Hi, this is my second video in the prep series. Um, what I wanted to do this time is just give you some tips on how to stay on track, how to make sure that you get the most out of your prep and the whole experience. Um, so I've put together my top 10 tips. So number one would be, are you actually ready to compete? Um, most people decide they want to compete and really want to get on stage as soon as possible because they're so keen, you're so excited, it's all new and you just want to get to the stage. Uh, but the reality is, um, whichever category you're going to compete in, um, you need a certain amount of muscle, which means you need some training history. So unless, um, like I did, I was competing in another sport, so I've been training for years, um, so I had this block of training behind me um, before I went into that first diet. Um, if you haven't had that, if you haven't given yourself a really good, solid block of training, and I'm not talking about a couple of months, I'm talking about maybe a year or more, to really establish and build your body, so that when you diet down for your show, you don't end up with just nothing left. Um, so really think about it and get some advice if you're not sure, or speak to a coach or someone who's competed before, um, to get an idea of whether you are really ready because once you start that prep phase, the bit everyone thinks is really important, the sort of 12, 16, 20 weeks, all you're going to do in that time is bring out the best of what's already there. So unless you're, you've already got this um, structure and body built, you're not going to develop that massively while you're on your diet phase. Now I have seen the odd exception where someone does put on some muscle while they're training for a show, but it is really rare. Um, and you don't want to just expect that that's going to happen. So if you don't feel like you've already got the muscle shape there, then maybe just delay that competition date and give yourself some training first so that when you do go into your prep, you are actually ready and you've got a body that can cope with the, with the diet. Secondly um, is your emotional health. Have you really thought about why you're competing? Um, is it just because everyone's doing it, because you went to the gym and someone said, oh, you look great, you should compete? Or do you really want to do it? Um, I think it's really worth considering, what is your body image like? Um, do you have a healthy relationship with food before you start? Um, because you're going to put yourself in a situation where you get on stage um, and you're being judged on how you look. Um, and you need to be able to cope with that. Um, so if you haven't really thought about how you feel about that, then do give it some thought before you before you even start, or if you have started your prep, try and start getting your head around that now. So obviously everyone wants to do well. Most people, probably the first time, do go into it genuinely thinking, uh, it's on my bucket list, I want to go do this, I want to see if I enjoy it, um, just have a great time, and they're not worried about placing um, and call out. But in reality, when you're on that stage, are you going to be disappointed if you don't get a call out um, and you don't play, if you don't come home with a trophy? How are you going to feel about that? If you're in the best shape of your life, there should be part of you that's still really excited and happy about that. Um, yes, you might feel a bit disappointed, but can you cope with that? Because if that's going to be soul-destroying, um, then maybe it's not the sport for you there's, there's lots of other sports that you can do out there if, if being judged on how you look and potentially being disappointed because there were other athletes there that are more experienced or just have better genetics and um, you need you need to know that you can cope with that and you might not know whether you can cope until you've actually done it but you really you're not doing yourself any harm by thinking about how you might feel about it first before you get there and get the shock of coming off stage and realizing that you feel like the world's ended because the judges didn't like you that day. Um, now there's lots of things you can you can do, like um, you can go and speak to the judges after the show and find out why you didn't play. So there genuinely could be um, lots of things that you could do to improve on either your physique or your stage presence. Um, you might not be in the right category, it might not be the right type of show for you. Um, so that might make you feel a lot more, more satisfied that you've come the best you possibly could right now, but there's still things you could do to improve for next time. But do you have a think about um, how you're going to feel if it doesn't go to plan? 
are you if you come away and you don't play but you're really loving how your body looks and feels and how fit you are is that going to be enough for you um so you have a think about that um my next thing is just get organized um life can get in the way so many times so um whether you've got a coach or whether you're doing this yourself make a shopping list plan your meals ahead get some emergency meals made and put in the fridge or the freezer so if you have a really bad day you, you've, you've run out of food or you haven't got time to cook you've got something there as a backup that means you're going to stay roughly on track even if it's not quite the right meal um, schedule in your diary when you're going to do your training sessions um, if it's scheduled it's in your diary and you can see it there you're much more likely to do it than if you just think oh well I haven't got time today but I'll make it up later in the week because something else could come up later in the week and, and throw you even further off plan so um so really just try and get everything to do with your food and your training organized in advance so most people do it on a sunday it's like prep sunday where you get everything ready for the, the week ahead and um, just to make the week as smooth as possible and take pressure off yourself um having some life balance um you shouldn't feel like you have to be a hermit for the next 12 16 20 weeks um, what I personally do, um, and this is what I advise my clients to do, is to be flexible with your cheat meal. Um, whether that's um, a cheat meal where you can eat whatever you want, or whether it's a clean carb up, depending on what part of prep you're in. Um, I look at if I've got um, someone's birthday coming up, or I want to go out for a meal with my husband, or, you know, if, if there's something I've got that I want to do, I plan my treat meal on that day so that I can still go out um, and have some normal life while I'm prepping because you don't want to switch your whole life on hold just for this competition. Um, so yeah, having that little bit of normality, um, it's good for your friends and your partner and your family as well if you can just switch off a little bit from your competition, um, even if it's just for a few hours, <laughs> um, so that it doesn't become that all-consuming thing. Um, my next thing, whether, again, whether you've got a coach or whether you're doing this yourself, um, try not to go too mad too soon. So whether that's doing too much training too soon or taking your diet too strict too soon. Your body can only metabolise fat at a certain rate. So if you can increase your cardio to two or three sessions a week and you start losing fat, then that's great. So what would be the point in doing six days of cardio from week one if you were going to lose fat on three days? It, it's just pointless. Your body's just going to get used to it. Your body is very good at getting used to what you're doing and economising. So if you go too much too soon, your body is just going to adapt itself to cope with that, plateau, and then it makes it very difficult to, to find what else to do to keep you progressing. So it's just chipping away at your prep. So when your prep starts, it's not going to be, yesterday I was training four or five days a week with no cardio, to tomorrow prep starts, so now I'm training six days a week, twice a day. Those jumps don't need to be that big. It, you only need to add enough to start getting some progress. Um, that way you should be able to keep progressing right through your prep without it becoming sort of dangerously low calorie or massively over training so it's just to ha um, have some structure to how you're going to um, increase your training and change your diet um, <laughs> my next tip is limiting how much time you spend on social media and being very conscious about who you're following um, lots of people play mind games on social media lots of people want to portray a certain image um, People have their favourite body parts, it might be their abs or it might be their glutes, and they'll be very good at cropping in a photo to show them looking perfectly, or they'll edit the pictures to make their waist smaller or their butt more bubbly. Um, you know, people will just put what makes them look the best. And if you're following fellow competitors and they're doing this and you don't realise, you could think that they're so far ahead of you, but it's actually they might not be. It might just be they've got this one good body part, but you're judged on more life and the number of times I've seen someone on Instagram 
and you think, wow, that's amazing. And then you turn up on show day, and you think, is that the same person? Because they look totally different. Um, so really, just to be very mindful of who you're following, um, and whether everything they're showing is, is real. Um, you just need to be really aware of that. And if it is starting to bother you, and you're finding it less inspiring and more worrisome, then you can unfollow people on Facebook, and they don't know that, but they won't come up on your news feed. So you can easily stop yourself being obsessed by it. Just don't scroll through Instagram all day. You know, just try and spend a bit less time doing that. Yes, definitely research um, other things online, but just try not to get obsessed with following fellow competitors. Um, especially when you don't know like, if they're also training naturals, so their progression might be much quicker than yours, if they're using assistance. Um, you know, so just be, just be very aware of who you're following um, on social media. Um, and also that's the same in real life as well. Um, as soon as you stop prepping, everybody becomes an expert on competing. The same as the minute I mention I'm vegan, the whole world becomes an expert on protein. Um, so yeah, um, as soon as you mention you're competing, everybody, whether it be some bloke at the gym, other coaches who might think you've got a lot of potential and might want to coach you, um, everyone will have an opinion on what you're doing. Um, If you can think of anything else that you're worried about, pop it in the comments. And um, if you want me to talk more about any of those topics, because I have brushed over them quite quickly, then let me know, because I can always talk in more depth about um, some of those things in future episodes. Um, okay, so next I'm going to show you my um, quarter turns and comparison pictures from last week to this week. within a week. Um, this is more to keep myself on track um, because I know I'm going to be checking every week and that does, knowing that you've got a checking date coming can help because if your competition is 16 or 20 weeks away that's a long time to stay on track so it's good to get into this habit of just tracking your progress and giving yourself, if, if you're checking in with a coach then, that, then you've already got that accountability but if you don't have a coach it's good to do this for your own, your, your own progression as well. Um, I'm taking creatine at the moment, so I don't expect my weight to drop massively at the moment because um, I always have water retention with that. Um, my weight has, has actually gone down just over a pound this week, um, but I feel a little bit leaner and I, I look more at my pictures than anything else. Because I stay quite tight on my off-season, my measurements aren't really going to change. So um, I maybe expect maybe an inch or two maximum for my weight come down during my prep but you know week by week I'm not going to see massive changes so I haven't measured this week um because I don't expect to see any uh, changes um so yeah I'm just going by my pictures um I haven't had to be too strict so far I've just cleaned my diet up a little bit um I don't do massive amounts of cardio because of my body type um I'm very tall naturally very skinny so too much cardio might would just disappear um but I'm also training for a track competition at the moment, which is actually coming up before my competition. So at the moment, my cardio is really just my sprint training. So three times a week, I'm doing either track sessions, hill sprints, or um, some plyometrics. Um, and the rest of the time, it's all weights. Um, obviously, that's different for different body types, but that's um, how I'm approaching it. Um, if I stop seeing progress, I will adjust my training and my diet, but at the moment I'm kind of happy with where it's at, so I'll be continuing with what I was doing last week for the next week. 
Um, in the upcoming um, videos, I'm going to be talking more about supplements, uh, training techniques, uh, different approaches to diet, um, and also about the, the posing side of things with Sage. So if there's anything you're like, dying to ask or want me to talk about, then put it in the comments and I can try and make that for my next video. So if you are prepping with me, I hope it's going well, drop me a comment to let me know how it's going so far. Um, yeah, and I shall see you next week.